Matua Rawuri Whare Mate, Ngāti Wai, Ngāti Moirewa, Ngāpuhi. Ngāti Wai Ngāpuhi historian holds many hats in the Tāmaki area on trust boards and University of Auckland. He is also the Mental Health Foundation cultural advisor. Uh, I whānau i ahau ki, ki kaukawa, uh, te rā wā uh, tōku nei māma no ngā whare mate i Ngāti Moirua, uh, uh, Ngāti Moirua ngā, ngā puhi, uh, tōku nei pāpa, uh, te oke mohe wepiha no ngai te rangi, uh, i mārana rāua nā ka puta mai i ahau. Uh, e rangi ki te taho tōku klangi māno Ngāti Wai uh, ki Great Barrier i runga tō tātou kaupapa o te tikanga o te whāngai ka whāngai e hau ki te taho tāku māma no ngā wharemate o Ngāti Moirua uh, tipu ake i a hau ke reira uh, i te rāwā uh, nā uh, ka whāngai a hau ki te taho ngā wharemate tōku nei tūpuna paura whānau ia uh, whāngai ia ki, ki ngai te rangi ki te taho o taku klani mā ke reira um, tōna nei hop, hapu no Ngāti Rehua uh, Ngāti Wai Tainui uh, nā reira mihe ana ki aia uh, no Great Barrier uh, e rangi i tēnei wā e Marana ia hau ki tōku nei wahine a Julie, uh, he wahine pāhea, no ahi tradia ia, uh, toko waru oku nei uh, tamariki, uh, five boys, uh, three girls, uh, o nui oki ngā mea, ngā, ngā mokopuna, uh, pakeke tonu oku nei tamariki, no ana au uh, ki tōku nei kāinga, uh, rao tahi tukataku wahine uh, I tēnei wā e mahi ana au i, I te Wairi Centre uh, University of Auckland uh, Whakapakari i roto i ngā, ngā mahi workforce development uh, Mō tō tātou uh, uh, child and adolescent health So koe tēnei taku mahi uh, mahi ana au e cultural advisor ki uh, Mental Health Foundation uh, I runga te poari o ngā Youth Horizons uh, Nine years there So, uh, you know, ki pai hoki o kunei mahi uh, I roto i te haora uh, Ki te pakari tonu ngā, ngā huarahi tika Mō ngā rangatahi me ngā tamarihi um, Tēnei tohu o te tamariki, tai tamariki Ka mōhio i a hau tōku nei uh, tupuna a perehātara uh, ki te hokinga i a hau ki te whakarongo ngā kōrero o Ngāti Moirua te rā wā 1930s, 1940s ka hihi tonu taku tupuna ki te uh, hanga e whare mō ngā, mō ngā rangatahi mō ngā taitamariki te rā, te rā kōrero o Ngāpuhi nā e hanga e whare kerere ki te ki te haere i, uh, I tō tātou whānau ki ngā klakia, uh, ki te whakangāhau, ki te kanikani, me, me a rātou activities katoa ki te, ki te mahi kereira. I tērā hihi, te hihi o tōku nei tūpuna, ki te whakapakari tonu ngā ahua, ngā tirohanga o tō tātou rangatahi taitamariki uh, kereira. Nā koe tere te tīma tānga o tōku nei tohu ki te mahi i roto i te hau ora o ngā taitamariki. So, you know, that whole process of being able to know that you started somewhere. My great-grandfather uh, developed a youth centre in the north and he named that whare Te Hunga Iti, which is a very suitable name for the young ones, you know. And he wanted to find a central place to bring all. We had plenty tamariki at that time, but to bring them there and develop them and develop their desires, 
almost a whareawamanga type of a process, kami kami whakangahau and all that type of stuff, you know. And so carrying on from there, this is a tuhu that I've always wanted to to kind of follow in terms of our kaupapa of working with young people. So, oku nei ingoa, ko rauri wharema te ia hau, toku nei ingoa, rauri, engari, uh, David is, is another name that I'm known by, um, wharema te, uh, Sadler, same, same name, so, uh, kia ora koe. You know, life is a, is a potential, you know, you start at kore, and you go through to te ao marama, well, kore, in the Pākehā language, is nothing. In Māori, kore is potential to, potential to uh, develop, potential to move forward, potential for greater enlightenment. And so uh, uh, the potential for our young people to reach the best that they can be uh, is often intervened by a number of ways. Well, death is one of them. But uh, to select to die can only be because you are going to defend your country. But to select to die just for the purpose of decide, deciding that this is where it's at and finish is, you know, is not the proper thing to do. Uh, because what it does, it leaves uh, an aftermath of a whole lot of um, of hurt, mamai, and probably a lot of unresolved questions about why is it that my mokapuna, why is it that my young person, why is it that my 44-year-old son committed this whakamumuri? And so they are left with unanswered questions. But the real putake of the kōrero is how is it that that uh, person got to the point where they wanted to do away with themselves. And, uh, you know, there are a whole lot of hosts of things. The most common is uh, drug-fueled alcohol um, in your systems that tend to kind of not give you reasonable uh, decision-making for yourself. That's usually the frontline stuff. And, of course, there are broken relationships and so on and so on and so on. So we've had this corridor, which is evident. The other parts are violence, um, incestuous or abuse, sexual abuse. All those situations have been occurring. Now, you know, back in the old days, hardly ever spoke about that. But we all knew that it went on. Uh and because of the advocacy within uh, Aotearoa, we are now speaking out on the subject. No longer can you harm us, abuse us emotionally, sexually, physically, uh, and all that type of thing. Well, you know, in my day, to get a big hiding was, was a normal, a norm for us. My cousin down the road got the same type of hiding. You know, and and it took a while for us to understand that that wasn't the only type of discipline that we could have we could have dealt with. We could have dealt it, dealt with it differently, and so all these things have fuckapapa connections. When you talk about alcohol and drug, you can always know that hekeho, kamtarukino, waipiro, uh, and fafai. You know, they're all close by. And and uh, then there are the children of, of that are not noticed. In my day, don't call it all. All the old people call it all. You get behind and stoke the fire and keep the keep the boiler burning. That was the call it all when I was a boy. Uh, today, uh, the... the you know, the encouragement for our young people to speak out is very, very strong. And so the issue for us is to provide the necessary choices that allow the potential 
um, to continue to move forward for all our, our mohoponas. And um, the secrecy of sexual abuse and other abuses that go on, often domestic abuse, that is never told until finally you end up in hospital and someone outside the family ring the police. And that is where the process starts. And so we are not talking about suicide anake. We are talking about an association of whakapapa that leads, I think, I, I call it teata whakamumuri. And teaka whakamumuri, teata whakamumuri is to sit on the point of the apex of the roof. And you are, you are so uh, definely balanced that just a puff of wind could blow you to death or to blow you to life. Which one will you choose? And I think coming to that apex is all the children of this ngangara that continues to grow. So um, I think we will not be able to scrub suicide. But we can certainly um, uh, give license to everyone to make it difficult for the tamariki of suicide to intervene in our families and our hapu. And we can reduce that by parents, grandparents, and whanaunga taking responsibility for family, for whanau. So in terms of, of um, the whakapapa around us, uh, I just remember working uh, in, in services for child and adolescent health, CAM services. There was this this particular person, he, he, uh, he attempted five times. The family situation was one of um, uh, drug, alcohol, father incarcerated, uh, mother dealing with a big family, also alcohol issues. And so whenever he attempted, it was usually around alcohol, drugs. And so we worked with him. And we took him back to the north and had him with his, his grandmother. And things began to change. Now, when he came back after about five months, he came back for a short period down here and started to get into problems again. So we called a meeting and uh, came down. We had a bit of a corridor and they took him back. He stayed with his grandmother. He ended up as a education advocate. Now, that is over a period of five years. That that corridor I'm talking about is, you know, it's brief in, in my my uh, commentary, but it took five years to get him to a place where he felt uh, that he had some constructive place in society for himself. But all of those issues were done because we had a good co-martyr who, uh, who recommended that uh, wisdom from the old people might be worth a shot. Um, his family situation was in dire straits, no father in the family. Um, the whakapapa of their family was drugs, alcohol, jail. And so his ability to be able to bounce back from a very, very dire situation was impossible without the support and help of Fano. So when came down, I expected that there would be a social worker and maybe one other. But he brought, they brought the Fano with him, with him, with him, and, and uh, we had a dialogue and. You know, it was all up to him. And he said, would you like to go back and stay with your grandfather, or grandmother? And he said, yes. So he went he went home and stayed and did some great things, um, not without incident, uh, but certainly uh, his ma his grandmother had a significant way to influence on him and had moved him, you know, with the help of 
iwi services, uh, Ngāpō iwi services who supported them in certain aspects, I, I guess in work, in kura, in um, socialising a lot better, in supporting the grandmother to, to, you know, to work with the boy as well. And so um, that is probably an example of a kaumato intervention, one. The second one is uh, an example that somebody has to maintain hope. And so an example of two providers coming together, one mainstream, one iwi services. The third part is when we hui, that we brought him and his mother, in fact, and the grandmother and other relatives, uncles and aunties actually came down and hui together. And we we made a decision and he went north um, and was able to, to move uh, to, to a, a good place for himself. So I haven't seen him for years. I don't know what he's doing. All I know is that that's probably one example of the early developments of what took place uh, for for uh, iwi hapu and that type of thing. You know, my mother, she was a student of the New Testament. Mutu te, te, te mahi mirakau. We finish, we go back, we have a kai, and then we sit by the fire and rub our mother's feet, us as children. And then she would read the New Testament in Māori to us and, uh, and loved it. And she was the epitome of all that was good about what she read. And so those, those teachings went for two to three hours. Most of the time, I slept on my mother's feet because, you know, I get tired. I get tired, but the, the hum of that beautiful voice is still ringing in my ears, you know, and it's been 30, 30 40 years since my mother has gone. But I still remember that hum, and it's a beautiful hum of her voice, but we slept on her legs and she would then uh, go to bed and we go to bed and we're up at four o'clock and we do it all again and come back at night. Well, is it a reality that our parents are doing that to our children? Our grandparents are doing that for our children now. Well, I would have to contest it because I believe the teacher in our families at the moment, we wharewānanga with Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3. And I, I, I wharewānanga with Māori TV because that's my favourite channel, uh, mainly because it, it's akin to me. So where are our teachers? All our old people are moving to the other world at such a rate, unprecedented right now. So what we have is this incredible um, space of nothing, no knowledge, no tikanga, no kōrero, no systems of learning, other than harikoe ki te wānanga i roto i tamaki makaurau, i roto i te wānanga o Aotearoa, not that it's not a bad thing because I'm an advocate of education, but to really know um, and get support around these issues, it starts in the home. Why? Ko te putake, he wainganui wo ngā tangata o te ao no te whanu. The most important unit in this world is the family unit. And it is there that all the, the subtleties and nuance, nuances of, of language, of feeling, of emotion, of tradition sits in the family. And uh, I, I function in my family the way my parents taught me. And uh, uh, there are things like 
the death of the two wives of Patuone who took their lives and went across the other side. Like that, I would also have a responsibility to put those things that are not good for our family aside and continue to perpetuate in a hundred years. My word is going to be tikanga in my family. But what they need to know, a hundred years before, I was taught the same tikanga of, of my tupunas. You know, I'm a great believer. I, I am proud of who I am. And uh, the older I get, the more appreciative I become of who I really am. And, and um, I am so appreciative of my, my parents who taught me as a, as a child right through. Um, and uh, it is amazing, but they say that the older you get, you start to lose your memory. Well, that hasn't been my experience in my 50s and 60s. What it has is that you, you are blessed with a waiver. And I know when I say things, I remember some of the things that my father said to me, or I heard him say in tongue. And then, uh, oh boy, what a beautiful jewel. And so these things are still available. So, yes, it is. That resilience is such an important part because really resilience is, is that these traditions will endure through the greatest stresses that life will ever bring you, even to Te Atafakamumuri, that you can look back on these traditions and lean on them. E whakawhiri na ki koe, i ronga ngā tikanga me ngā kawa and know that uh, as stressed as you've been bent over, backwards or forwards, that you have the power to straighten it up with your traditions and with the gifts that you've been blessed with. You know, there's this quarter that goes, Karangatapu uh, Mokai. And Karangatapu Mokai is a, a quarter around people who have been brought born with special gifts. There's those who can court it all. There's those who can waiata and develop waiata, haka. Uh, there are people who are great in the Pākehā world, uh, researchers. There are people that know how to do gardens like you never do gardens, and all these things. So each of us are born with a karakatapu mōkai, and it naturally is a part of us. But when we get into a family now, for our family of 14, if you have a look, some of them are good at certain things. But collectively, that should make up and arm your family for all that you will face, the forces of good and the forces of not good. And that those traditions, uh, however the wind brings you, that you have the power to, to, to relinquish you're really what I call your mana because what happens is when you're stressed out, when you're stressed out, what you've got to do is be able to pull yourself back. And that is your kalangatapu mokai and your mana that brings you back to where you should be. Your modi, your, you know, all those enactments of the tikanga that makes you who you really are.